Hi there, friends in Blackwood and beyond, wherever you're from, welcome, thanks for joining me. I hope that you've already been able to join me as we've paused to pray. We regularly do that on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Sunday today. And if you've done that, great. If you haven't yet done that, then there's a link below where you'll be able to click on that. And in doing so, you'll know that many others have uh, similarly paused to pray today. Well, uh, no matter whether you've done that or not, you're welcome here. Okay, so let's turn our focus uh, in our direction of our God, reorientate our thinking, our hearts and our minds in his direction. As we say these words together, they'll pop up on the screen, joining me in saying them. Our God is good, in him we will delight. Our God is gracious, in him we will rejoice. Our God is great, in him we will trust. Now here are some words from the poetic hymn by John Rutter. For the beauty of the earth, for the beauty of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies, Lord of all, to thee we raise this our joyful hymn of praise. For the beauty of each hour, of the day and of the night, hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our joyful hymn of praise. For the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our joyful hymn of praise. For each perfect gift of thine, unto us so freely given, graces human and divine, flowers of earth and buds of heaven. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our joyful hymn of praise. In a moment, I want to encourage you to uh, take and open your Bible to Luke chapter 15. Maybe you can find that, uh, Luke chapter 15. Uh, I think it's a very suitable passage for us today because I have a treat for you. Well, as some of you know, occasionally I invite a friend or a colleague to come and visit us here on a Sunday at Mount Pleasant, uh, either be involved in the service or lead the service. Well, today I've invited our friend Jonathan Foreman, who's the minister of Blind Gwent Baptist Church in Abertillery, to come and give us a message today. Now, many of you will have met John and will have heard John before, and I'm looking forward to hearing what he has to say to us today. Uh, he'll be speaking from Luke chapter 15. So let's read the passage together now, and then I'll hand over to John. So Luke chapter 15, and I want to read verses 11 to 27. Verses 11 to 27. Jesus continued. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to, to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. 
Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he said, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he was, he has him back safe and sound. Well, good morning, Mount Pleasant in Blackwood. Uh, it's great to be able to take part in your service today. And I just want to say greetings from Blyna Gwen in Abertillery. Although we can't be together like we would normally be if uh, I was visiting you or if you came to visit us, uh, this is a great way to be able to unite together and just remind ourselves that we are one church in Jesus Christ. We have the same hopes, the same dreams to lift up Jesus as Lord, as Saviour, and to worship him and to be his people upon the earth. And uh, just as we come to today's talk, I'm going to pray for us. We're going to be looking at Luke 15, the story of the lost son. Uh, but let's just pray together. Lord, we thank you for the time that we can spend with you today. We thank you that we can come and join in services like this. And we just pray, God, your blessing upon us. Lord, I pray for the church there in Mount Pleasant. Lord, that you would bless them and keep them. Lord, that you would cause your face to shine upon them and give them your peace. Lord, that you would turn towards them and be gracious to them. Lord, I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The story of the lost son will be well known to many of us. It's a bit of a traumatic story. We see that uh, the youngest son goes to see his father one day, who he's been living with this whole time. And he says to him, Father, I want my half of the inheritance. Give me my share. And as he asks that question, we expect the father to get cross. We expect the father in the story to be disappointed because by asking for half the inheritance, he was effectively saying to his dad, I wish you were dead. But the father doesn't respond like that. It just says that the father gave him his share of the property. He divided it giving the oldest son his portion and the youngest son his portion. And then it says the son goes off into a distant land and through wild living and partying, he says the money runs out and the youngest son is left in a place of desperation, alone. He actually ends up feeding the pigs as he hires himself out to a farmer. And the situation in that moment is saying constantly, you're alone. You've blown it. And we might say, well, actually, you know what? This story's moving a little bit fast, Jesus. I mean, surely you want to tell us a bit more of the background. Surely we're meant to know a bit more of how this son went from a place of being in the father's house to rejecting all of that and going away and losing everything. But Jesus' focus in this story is not so much how the son got lost, but how the son returns. And when we understand the character of God that says he is interested in our return, he is interested in the welcome he gives more than how we got lost, more than how we found ourselves about God in the world, we begin to glimpse something of the heart of the Father, that he is a God of love who wants to receive his children back to him with a welcome. There was a story of a Maasai community leader, they're a tribe in Africa, and this Maasai leader was invited over to New York to see friends. And they went into Times Square in New York and it was crowded with all the horns of the cars, the bustle of the people, all the busyness we would expect in a major city. And suddenly the Maasai leader grabbed hold of his host and said, I hear a cricket. And then he led his host over the road and went to a small bit of shrubbery. And after looking through the branches, he found the cricket and said, there it is. 
Well, his friend at this point, who had lived in New York his whole life, said, you must have supersonic hearing. How could you hear a cricket in the midst of all of this? You must be superhuman. He said, no, I'm not superhuman. It's just about what I'm listening for. You don't care about crickets. That's why you don't hear them. He said, even so, even if I cared about crickets, I wouldn't have heard it. The Maasai leader looks at him and says, watch this. And he takes out a few coins from his pocket and subtly drops them on the pavement. Every head within 20 feet looked round to make sure it wasn't their money dropping on the floor. Because it's all to do with what we value and what we're listening for. God has made us with precise accuracy. He has made us beautiful. And something he has wired into every human is the ability to hear his voice. The question is, are we listening? See, the son in the story, he seems to have lost all hope. All the money's gone. He's in a distant land. He's had to hire himself out. He's eating the food that belonged to the pigs. That's how desperate it's got. But in the midst of that, although the situation said it's over, he is reminded of a truth greater than the situation he finds himself in. Because he is reminded of his father's voice of the welcome that God has for his children. And it says in that moment, he gets up and he begins the journey home. Yet as he's returning home, he, he has the wrong mindset. He, it's like he's got a glimpse of the welcome of God, but it's not quite right. Because he comes back saying, well, look, I'm just going to apologize. I'm going to say I've sinned against you. I've sinned against heaven. Uh, I'll just be a servant of yours. Just give me enough to live on. That's enough for me. And he goes back to the father with that mindset. And I think so often we have the same mindset. We, we think something of God and we, we start to make movement towards him slightly, but we don't quite grasp who he is. We, we've got it slightly wrong. We think we have to come kind of groveling, as it were, hoping for mercy. But what we see in this story is something completely different. You see, the father has been watching for the son. The whole time he's been away, you almost get this image of him going out every morning to say, oh, perhaps it's today that he will come. And it says, when the father sees the son, he runs to him and embraces him. And now we say, well, how, how do I come home? How do I get welcomed back by the father? How do I get that embrace that this son got, even though he had rejected him completely? We get it through the cross of Jesus Christ. You see, God the father, he didn't just wait for us to recognize and to hear his voice again through all the busyness and through all the noise. No, it says he came down from heaven to earth, entered into the busyness, entered into the noise, entered into the brokenness, into the pain, into the suffering, into the loss, into all the things that we struggle with in life. He entered into it and then he found us and he embraced us and he whispered that truth that says all are welcome to know the God who loves us. And he made that possible through the cross, the place where he died, a place that led to the tomb, a tomb that led to the resurrection on the third day when Jesus Christ destroyed all that stood against the people of the earth and he took it away that we might come home to know God. It's the invitation that lasts for eternity. The question is, are we listening? Will we respond? Will we come home to Jesus today?
Thanks, John. That was a really helpful reminder of the extent of God's fatherly love for us and the way in which he invites us to reconnect with him by giving our allegiance to Jesus. Well, if you've got any questions uh, for John uh, or any questions that come as a result of something that John has said, then do get in touch and I'll put you in touch with John or I'll get John to get in touch with you. Now, the passage that John read, that I read, that John focused on is in Luke chapter 15. And I've got a number of copies of Luke's gospel here that I'd be very happy to send to you. This is not the whole Bible, this is just Luke's gospel. And if you'd find that easy uh, to manage uh, and you would like a copy, do just get in touch and give me your contact details and I will happily pop one of these in the post to you. Finally, before I go, let me do what I've done each week, which is to point you in the direction of a particular song or hymn that we would sing together. Now, normally we'd enjoy our singing here. Well, don't feel that you have to hold back from singing uh, just because you're in your living room or your dining room, your kitchen, your study, your spare bedroom. Are you in your garage or your man shed? Well, this song, you can sing it out wherever you are. I'd encourage you to click on the link and sing along. Uh, it's been echoing around my house now uh, for a good number of uh, weeks. And with the words that were originally written by uh, somebody called Ada Habershon, but is now most popularly known through the performances uh, given by Keith and Kristen Getty, it's called He Will Hold Me Fast. I think you'll enjoy it. Click on the link. And once you've done that, well, like last week, there's a second option for you. Uh, and I'm giving you the link to a beautiful rendition of the hymn that I quoted at the beginning of our time together. Now we've sung it or heard it a number of times here in Mount Pleasant in the past, and if you're not familiar with it, I still think you'll love it. It's got a gentle musical arrangement accompanying a clear invitation to join the whole of creation in praising our Creator and Redeemer. It's John Rutter's For the Beauty of the Earth. And this rendition is by a performance from King's College Choir in Cambridge. I think you'll enjoy it. So, before I go, may I wish you the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And may they be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.